Hello and welcome to a new year. Happy New Year 2024. We are at that time of the year where everyone is fired up. Everyone believes that the year is going to be great. One of the questions I've been asked and I want to answer today at this first broadcast um, is to answer the question, what can I do to make my year better? What can I do to make my year better? I want to speak to you on strategies that you can deploy that will make your year end well and end better. You know, one of the things I found out is that it is not the year or the Gregory calendar that counts. It is what you do in the year that counts. You can have a special year. The best time of your year can begin from now. It doesn't have to wait to the middle of the year. It's what you do that matters. And I found out that great achievers have certain things they do. Great believers, people who depend on God, have certain things we do. See, and therefore I want to speak to you on how to make rapid progress in the new year. If you are excited about that topic, I want you to just tell your neighbors, um, share this link with somebody. If you are excited about that, just let somebody know uh, about it. If you are watching this much later, it's going to be very important that you share it with somebody and you just really, really listen to the things I'm about to share even with you today. Why? Because I know and I'm certain that God is about to transform your life. It is what we know that changes our life. Uh, people believe in luck, but listen to this, I don't believe in luck, I believe in cause and effect. When opportunities meet preparation, uh, shallow men call it luck. That's what Ralph Waldo Emerson said. You know, the Bible says in 1914, 1914 of the book of Psalms, Scripture says, Oh, satisfy us early with your mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Satisfy us early. One of our prayers is for early satisfaction. Early satisfaction is something you can program. It's part of the mind of God for us as believers. And today I want to quickly put into your hands what you need to do. You know, we are at that time of the year when people are fired up. They believe they can do anything. They know they can achieve whatever they want. They are running with prophetic words. Depending on who is your pastor, who is the prophet over you, you probably have certain words given to you. In our church, Ransom, that God has said, is a year of supernatural living, where we allow the nature of God to be fully expressed, uh, even in us. Uh, and this time of the year, people are beaming with hope, uh, not necessarily faith, but hope. Uh, hope. Hope that this year will be better. Hope that they will enter a relationship this year. Hope that this year they will get married. Hope that this year they will start that business. Uh, people are hoping that this year, even that the nation will get better. Hope is a good waiter but a bad receiver. You cannot live your life just by hoping. You have to do certain things to ensure that you begin to act. You see, hope is passive. Faith is active. But therefore, you must move from just hoping that the year will be better to start acting and doing things that will make the year better for us. Many times, the believer's problem is not the world. The believer's problem is not system. It's not the devil. The believer's problem is the believer himself. This year, you must turn all your hope to concrete plans. You must make plans. Whatever it is you have been hoping to do, this year, you must start to work on them. And when I talk about this year, I tell our folks uh, that, listen, this year does not start in June. It doesn't start in February. Somebody say, you know, I'm just preparing. I'm fasting all through January, like many churches do. Listen, dear friends, uh, action must start now. As you are doing the spirituals, you must also maintain physical work. Start acting on that idea now. It's not, you don't have to wait till February to propose. If you want to propose, propose now. Whatever you have to do, you have to do it now. There is something called the power of now. If you act now, you will see that your life will change. Listen, it has been said that people are more awful, are more energetic in the first two months of the year. Why? Because they just believe they are starting something new. So they believe they can do many things. They believe they can achieve greatness. There is still hope, but there is still 365 days. I can do so many things. So February, there is still hope. But by March, it's discovered that people begin to lose hope. That when you find people in October, November, they are probably in despair. And I tell you that the best time to act uh, is when your energy level is at the highest. Uh, and you see, our energy level is at the highest when hope is full. Uh, and at this time, January, February, you must decide you're going to act now. It's discovered that greatest achievement of many people happen in the first quarter of the year. Don't wait to the second quarter. Don't wait till after you have done your fasting and prayers. Uh, begin to act now. Now that you are hopeful, 
beaming with energy, start attacking your goals. Start doing what you have planned to do. Start submitting your CV. Start writing that professional exam. Whatever it is you have hoped to do, it's time to do it now. Just do it. What do you think when you hear just do it? You think probably of Nike. Nike is one of the highest manufacturers of sports equipment. At one time, they were just makers of running shoe company. They were just um, makers of running shoe. Uh, but today, they make every equipment that has to do with sports. Uh, probably everyone in the world recognizes the Nike logo. Uh, that, that mark, that correctness mark, that mark of right, that right, uh, that mark tells you this is Nike. Uh, and there is something about them. There is uh, a slogan, which is just do it. Uh, whenever we think of just do it, we think of Nike. Uh, I want to encourage you this year that if you are going to make rapid progress, you have to just do it and do it right now. Don't just talk about running, start running now. Don't stop, don't talk about starting that company now. Start that company right now. The message is clear. The time to stop bragging has come. Uh, you have to stop bragging, stop saying, stop planning, stop saying, I will do and start doing that. The world does not record the world does not record the histories of planners. Uh, the world records the histories of doers. Uh, you must be someone who is interested in doing that. Uh, there comes a time where we stop practicing to stop acting. We need to get to the arena of life and stop acting. Now, Christians uh, must start acting on the word of God. If you believe the scriptures, it's time to walk in it. If you believe that God heals, it's time to lay hands on the sick. If you believe in the supernatural, then step in uh, and then you will see the miraculous. It's time to start living out your plan and your purposes. Uh, you cannot grow in your relationship with God uh, if you claim, I have seen the Lord. If you have seen the Lord, then the Lord must have told you what to do. There's a compelling vision that we must walk, must walk in. Because Isaiah saw the Lord, he obeyed God's call. Because Ezekiel had seen the Lord, he obeyed God call, God's call. Because Paul had seen the Lord, he obeyed God's call. Because John had seen the Lord, he obeyed God's call. If you have seen the Lord, what have you done? Long before Michael Jordan was hawking tennis shoes that are more expensive, um, even than a bicycle. <laughs> oh, God had been saying, just do it. Before there was a night company in Seattle, God has been saying, just do it. To a man of character and a man of faith, Noah. God said to Noah, the world is depending on you. It is You are the future. You've got to build an ark to preserve the world. Just do it. To a successful man in your of Chadis. By the name of Abraham, God's voice came and said, now leave your father's house. God's voice says, do it and do it now. And he did. To that 80 year old sheep other in, in Egypt, God's voice came to Moses at the backside of the desert and God said, do it. Whatever is in your heart to do, do it. The time to fret a stop, it is time to act. Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whatever you do, do it all to the glory of the Lord. That woman, that woman, the mother of the Christ, went to Jesus at Cana in Galilee. And I love what she said. She said, whatever he tells you to do, he said, just do it. The miracle was dependent on them acting. If by the time Jesus had said to them, take water, take it to the uh, chairman of a ceremony, if they had stopped and they didn't do anything, they would not have seen the miracle. Can I say to somebody today that the miracle is on the other side of obedience? That the miracle is on the other side of obedience. You've got to do what you want to do this year. You've got to do it now. There's nothing stopping you but you. No system is stopping you but you. If you will step out in faith, and that's what faith is. It's acting. It's acting on what the Lord has said concerning you. It's time to act. Stop looking at impossibilities. Start seeing endless possibilities. Listen, one of the things I've told people and we must learn to do, and that's one of the primary reasons I'm sharing this with you, is that you do not have to wait for day 300 to make your decisions. You do not have to wait for day 250 before you get married. Whatever your heart is set to do, now 
if you hear his voice adding not your heart uh, there is nothing stopping you now from launching out uh, if this is how to make rapid progress uh, you must start acting now you know today being the, 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 not today now on the second day on the second day tuesday the second day of the year uh, I, I mean i i, I had to had always had it in mind that my girls should learn how to play the musical equipment and I went further, bought the keyboard uh, for them to be able to do that. And I spoke to a gentleman who could teach them how to do these things. But we did not finish the negotiation. We didn't finish. We didn't agree. And I left it at that. You know, today I just called him up and decided, uh, and I said, hello, uh, our conversation. And he said, you know, there are three. Uh, I, I think we need to get another equipment. Uh, uh, and he was suggesting, he said, let's get a violin for me. And I said, that's fantastic. Let's get a violin. Uh, and he said, when can we get it? I said, today. He said, he said, when can I start? I said, start now. Start today. Why are we waiting? They are on holiday. This is the best time to start. Let's start now. Let's start today. Listen, start writing the book now. Start today. There is nothing you are waiting for. You've got to understand that the moment you step out, the endless possibilities will happen because you step out. Until the priest stepped into Jordan, Jordan did not part. Until Moses put his rod on the Red Sea, it did not part. You must understand that the miracle is waiting for your action. Many times, some of us are looking for motivation in order to do what God has called us to do or what we know we have to do. Can I say to you that motivation is a ruse? Motivation is a trap. Just do it. Whether you are motivated or not, do it. I can't tell how many times I've prayed because I'm motivated to pray. Why? It's the discipline of prayers. I don't know how many times I've read scriptures or read books or prepare or just gotten trainings because I feel like it. No, I've got to do it. Motivation is a room. Stop waiting on motivation. Just do it. Why? Because you believe that's God's plan. You believe the other side of your next level is at doing what you've got to do. Come on. It's time to do what you have to do. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of the Lord. But those who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. You see, doing the will of God is important. Doing is important. If you are going to see rapid progress in 2023, you must start doing. You must start doing. Can I quickly, as I run this off, uh, give you certain clues? I want to share with you seven key things seven key things you need if you are going to make rapid progress in 2024 somebody say you know what that's how the prophetic word is always given in my church nothing nothing alight on my life i've never seen it manifested can i say to you that the prophetic word will always do its part if you are not seeing the fulfillment of the word, it's because you aren't doing your part. There is the part of man, there is the part of God, is the reason we call it the supernatural. Is the reason we call it uh, the power of God. It's coming upon you, but it needs you as a vessel. Oh, the Bible says, unto man will I call, my voice will be to the sons of man. God will act, God will change your life, but God will need you to align even with him. I want to quickly give you seven key things. Uh, and you're saying, you know what, PFA, I want to make rapid progress. I'm interested in making rapid progress. First thing you must do is that you must stop giving excuses this year. What you can't do now, you won't do in June. What you can't do now, you won't do in December. Stop giving excuses. There will always be a reason why you can't do what you want to do. Always be a reason. Always be a reason you can travel. Always be a reason you can't write that exam now. Listen, there will always be lions on the street. Proverbs 22, 13. Proverbs 26, verse 13. Lions on the street does not only deter the lazy. It also deters those who only dream of greatness and never achieve it. If you are going to achieve greatness this year, 2024, stop giving excuses. Tell yourself, I, do no, long, I no longer have excuses. I'm going to do what I want to do and I'm going to do it fired up. I'm going to do it fired up. One of my best portion of scriptures in Exodus chapter 3. Why is that? Because in Exodus chapter 3, there was a conversation between divinity and humanity. Moses had a conversation with God and he kept giving excuses, telling God why he couldn't do it. And you know, everything he said, God responded. 
telling you that you cannot outmaneuver or you cannot give God an excuse to keep him quiet. God has thought of all of the excuses and he has made a way. But you will not understand and you will not see the way he has made except you step into that assignment. Listen, Moses had to go back to Egypt to discover that God's miracle was already ready for him. When he moved to Egypt, he began to walk in the miraculous. This was somebody who had never walked in the supernatural. But because he entered into the assignment of God for his life, he opened to himself a vista, even of possibilities. Can I say to somebody today that by answering what God has said, by putting your hand on the plug, by starting that business, oh, by, 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 by just writing that professional exam, what you are doing is that you are making room even for the miraculous. Number two, I want to ask you, principle number two, very quickly, go and act on the faith that you have now. Somebody says, you know, this year, I want to build my faith. I've had members of my church tell me that. Say, I want to build my faith. And when people tell me that, I smile. Because Jesus said to us in Matthew 17, 20 to 21, that the faith you have now is enough. The faith you have now is enough. If your, if your gist is, you know, if I can have faith, God can do it. That means you believe in the object of your faith, which is God, that God can, right? What you are saying is that I don't believe him enough, right? That first faith is enough. God said in that version of scripture, Jesus was speaking. He said, if you have faith like a much to see, you will say to the two, you will say. So the secret is not in the size of the faith. It is in the usage of the faith. He said, whosoever shall have faith like a mustard seed and shall say in his heart, shall say to this mountain, be ye moved. Listen, if you have faith like a mustard seed and you say, saying is an action. Saying is a verb. When you can act, you can see miracles. God is saying that the miracle is by acting. Faith is not passive. Faith is active. When you begin to move and walk in faith, then you begin to see God walk on your behalf. Act on the faith you have now. It's as you walk and act in faith that your faith increases, that your faith improves. You've got to act on the faith you have now. Go on with what you have right now. Sometimes we give too much room for logic. What has God called us to? He can make it happen. Listen, dear friend, God has called us to a faith journey. You can think of ideas, but you shouldn't overthink faults or even failures. I've met people who can think of 50 ways something will not work. Let God be God. Let him show up for you. If you will enter into the fullness of God's mind, you first must accept that he's the God of all spirits and not the God of logic. To walk with God, you must learn to walk in the spirit. You must learn to walk by faith. God's spirit will lead you on and on and you must learn to follow. God's word came to Peter. Peter, go take the fish. You will get the money with it in its mouth. And Peter just went. How impossible is that statement? How impossible is what Jesus asked of him? But because Jesus has said it, the miracle was waiting. God said to Israel, move forward. The question is to where? There's rest in front of us. But God said, move forward. Because the word of the Lord has gone forth, the miracle was waiting. See, David with stones facing Goliath. It didn't make sense. It didn't make sense. You are going to defeat a man of war with experience, with a stone. How? But God was with the stone. Listen, God is with you. You will win because of who is with you, not because of what you have. You see, if all you have is God, then it's enough. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Oh, you have a back. In 2024, go with that idea. Number three, be bold and go for your goals now. Whatever goals you have set, you wrote them down. I mean, and that's why I love our, our, our 31st night. We write goals down. We make New Year resolutions. But you see, those resolutions will become revolutions. You've got to act on those goals now. Don't say, I'm going to read four books in, in, in a month. Start reading those books now. Start praying now. Start doing those things now. Let no one tell you it can't be done. David, Daniel, the three Hebrew children, some things, they were all definitions of boldness. You've got to be bold. If God has said it, that settles it, I believe it. That's what Smithicus was saying. Listen, if you believe what God has said and you believe God is true, you have to be bold. Scripture says he has not given unto us the spirit of fear, but of power of love 
and of a sound mind. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. Proverbs 28 1 says the righteous is as bold as a lion. It's time to begin to live out our nature. It's time to begin to live out boldness. There is a way with God. Even if there is no way, God will make a way. I love that song. God will make a way when there seems to be no way. He walks in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. Listen, dear friend, God will make a way. With God, impossibility does not exist. Luke chapter 1 verse 37, scripture made it abundantly clear that with God, all things are possible. If God is the owner of that vision, he will ensure that that vision come to pass. All you need to do is to connect with God and stay with him. Joshua was faced with the arduous task of leading Israel to the promised land. After such a giant of a leader, Moses had left. God, God's word came to him again and again in the book of Joshua. He said, be strong and of good courage. Can I encourage you? 2024, no matter the news, no matter the reports, no matter the economic or the financial report, be strong and of good courage. If God has said it, he's going to do it. Number four, Principle I want to share with you how to make rapid progress. Quit procrastination. Nothing kills a vision, a dream, a life goal like procrastination. Procrastination is a tip of life and a tip of time. It is time to do it. Don't put off till tomorrow what you can achieve today. Don't put off till a better time and an opportune time what you can undo today. Bible says in C34, therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow we worry about itself each day has its own trouble <laughs> as the trouble of his own Matthew 6 34 listen dear friends face your tro- face today's trouble today trouble today's trouble today give to today is trouble like it said in common parlance today no grief for today ensure that you do today what you've got to do today got to pray today don't push it to tomorrow You've got to fast today, don't push it to tomorrow. You've got to give today, don't put it to tomorrow. You've got to start that business today, start today. Don't write that proposal tomorrow, you can write it now. No, you don't have to do that study tomorrow, do that study right now. You don't have to wait till tomorrow to ask that lady out. Ask her out now. You can receive your healing right now, not tomorrow. Do not put off to tomorrow what God has assigned to be done today, number five, principle how to make rapid progress the power of consistency one of the most powerful tools to change our life is consistency it's not just about i've done it before many times we give up too soon many times we we let doubt set in many times because we were seeking for results we are not consistent enough and so we look at our result and we say you know what this is not commensurate with my effort and we just stop You've got to understand that greatness is in consistency. Nobody becomes a giant suddenly. You need to learn consistency. You may not have to do more things. You just have to be consistent in what you are doing. Can I say that to somebody again? You may not have to do many more things or add to the things you are doing right now or in 2023. You just have to be consistent. Be consistent. David was consistent in leading the sheep of his father. Paul was consistent in preaching the message of Christ. Be consistent. Even if you don't have the results you sought for right now, be consistent. The greatness is in consistency. Be persistent. Be consistent. Keep digging. When you keep digging at a particular spot, you'll get to the water table. Very soon and very soon, water will gush out. There shall be a refreshing from that business. But don't give up. Don't give up. I feel like telling somebody today, don't give up. God is with you. Number six, uh, believe in God's plan for your life. Believe in the abundance resources God has given you. You are made for greatness. You are made in the image of God. He has sent His Son to die for you. You are called by His name. He gave you His Spirit to live inside of you. Believe that God is invested in your life. Believe. Believe that you are not alone. Believe that and finally activate the duty of spiritual routine. Activate the duty of spiritual routine. Our life responds to our spiritual growth. Our life responds to spiritual. No matter what they say to you, whether you are a Christian or not, 
or whether you are a Christian but you're not a good Christian, let me say this to you, that life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. You grow according to the level of your spiritual intelligence and your sagacity in the realm of the spirit. How do you build strength? How do you build mightiness in the spirit? By dedicating yourself to spiritual routines. There are things you must do constantly this year if you are going to make rapid progress. There are things you must do by reason of duty. Somebody was speaking to me and said, you know what? I love to pray when I, when I feel like praying. I, I don't like to do it by duty or by religious. I don't want to feel religious and say, you know what? The pastor said we should do it. I don't know. I slap. I said, but life is just routine. Listen to this. I don't care whether you do it crying, you do it loving. You must first of all have the spiritual discipline of consistency. There is a routine that must be around your life if you are going to be greater. The discipline and the routine of studying the Bible, the routine of praying, the routine of confession, the routine of meditation, the routine of, 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 of prayers. These things must be seen constantly in your life. The routine of worship. If you do not have these things in place, I doubt how well you will go even spiritually. If you want to increase your results, you want to make rapid progress, you must first of all dedicate time to growing up spiritually. There is so much benefit in growing up spiritually. Now there might be the gift of laying on of hands, but when it comes to knowledge, it's not by laying on of hands, it's by discipline. You grow by discipline. And when do you start? You start now. You must not be too busy to grow, too busy to have time with God, too busy. I've seen people who are so busy, yet they are so ignorant. People who are so busy, but yet they are confused. People who are so busy, yet they are not living life as they ought to. I want to encourage you as we move further, even in 2024, as we walk into rapid progress, I want to encourage you to have spiritual discipline over your life. I see 2024 panning out for you as your best year yet. I want you to take these seven things and begin to do them. Tell me, let me tell you something as I close. Don't wait till tomorrow. What can be done now? Begin right now and I'll await your testimony and your good report. Have a fantastic year. Cheers.